So here in the Litchfield Waterworks Trust, um, we're not just renovating one of the largest steam engines that's ever been built in the world. Um, we also renovate tiny model steam trines. Um, we repaired this for a local pub. It was a bit of a tourist attraction. Um, it had been there years, it had broke. We've now mended it, it's now running. We also repair items that um, Passerby brings in and Fortunately today, we had a really interesting item bought in, which I'm, I'm really dying to show you. Come with me and we'll have a look. So what we have um, is a table that was bought in by um, a passerby, um, a member of one of the other community centres, and what he tells me about this Tiber was that he actually built it himself um, sometime in the 1960s. Um, he wasn't a woodworker or a carpenter. He actually attended uh, a night school class, apparently. And so he, he built this himself. Um, it's been living at his mother's house for about 50 years. And over a period of about 50 years, it's, it's become sort of quite worn and tired. So if you look, it, 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 it's covered in um, stains from where people have put plant pots of drinks. It's also covered in water stains. Um, it's got quite a big split down the centre. And also um, it looks like some of the legs are coming loose. So we'll have a closer look at those at the moment. Um, the table itself is made out of oak. Um, it's all handmade, all very traditional, traditional hide glues. I think this is gonna be quite a sort of fun renovation project. Okay, if we take a look underneath, you can actually see some of the joints started to come apart. So although it's remarkably well built, um, it has got a few issues due to age and probably some damage. Um, and I'd like to repair it with traditional eyed glue. So the first thing we can do is let's get the glue pot on. Um, okay, so this is traditional hide glue. Um, if you can see, it's, it's in pearls. Um, it's actually made from, from um, boiled down bones and um, boiled up horses and bits of old cows and stuff like that. Um, it's traditional glue that's been around for hundreds of years and um, used extensively in the furniture making trade. Um, it's still useful to dye because it, it, it is an excellent quality glue. And the beauty of hide glue is um, it's actually reversible, um, which is something to bear in mind when you're actually renovating uh, furniture because um, what we can do is we can unpick what we're about to do today. So what I need to do with this hide glue is pop a little bit in a jar. Add some clean water just enough to cover and then we're going to leave that to gel up for about half hour or so and then we'll pop it in the slow cooker. While that's gelling up we can get on and start to um, take this table apart. Okay so as we can see it's quite a traditional construction this um, and it's actually using wooden buttons to hold the, the top down. Um, if you can see, um, the idea behind buttons was is they allowed expansion um, to try and prevent the table top from splitting as it's attached to the top. Um, wood actually expands across its width a hell of a lot more than it does its length. So you have to allow for this width uh, expansion and contraction. Unfortunately, in this case, it's not actually worked. Um, but that purely could be down to um, the fact that the table has been stored in a damp place and with hide glue, um, hide glue will, will fail if, it's, uh, if it gets damp. Okay, so, um, so that's the last of the buttons removed. Let's just pop the top to one side and we'll pop the base to one side and have a look. Oh, look at that. Yeah, so the blue glue itself is broken down. Although when we when we rejoint this up again, um, it's actually 
that's pretty good that so we've not really got to do anything with that other than uh, we'll get that glued up so we'll um we'll have a look at the glue and get the glue pot on so uh, our glue has actually been soaking there for about half hour and if you can see now um, it's just breaking down nicely into um, a jelly type consistency and um, actually smells wonderful not um, dogs seem to love it actually so what we're going to do with that now is to um, pop that into the slow cooker and let that cook down okay so what we have here is a bog standard slow cooker the sort of thing you buy from supermarkets um, I'm just going to pop a lid, lid loosely on there's some water in the bottom of the slow cooker um, pop it in there and we'll pop the lid on and we'll leave that now to cook down okay so um, if we look at this joint um, like most renovation projects go um, they're never actually sort of so straightforward what you can see is we've actually got what's left of a haunch tenon and unfortunately the um, the main part of the tenon is actually broken off so you're gonna have to um, replace that because otherwise the table is not going to have any strength um, I noticed one of these other joints felt quite loose as well but we'll have a go at knocking that apart and see how it goes okay so um, we've already encountered one problem already which is we've got um, one of the tenons broken on the legs um, what would be really helpful is if we can release this tenon here which is already reasonably loose and um, that gives us half a chance to sort of get at this and have a play around with it see if we can mend it um, I think this is quite often particularly with hide glue in my experience um, I think the best solution sometimes is to give it a little bit of brute force and see how it goes this this is actually um, this is actually a dead blow mallet and what this does it's full of lead shot um, but it gives a very sort of positive blow without denting the wood so hopefully brilliant okay so um, as I says this table um, is not without its problems um, we've already got one broken mortise and when I've taken the other mortise off it that's also broken as well so it looks like what's happened to this table is it's actually been dropped and it's landed on two of its legs and um, it snapped both the tenons and it was actually only held on by um, the small the small glue on the haunches um, so I think what we're gonna have to do is we're gonna have to reform these mortises now so we need to go over to the bench now and do a little bit of um, a little bit of handwork okay so um, so back at the bench um, we just need to clean the end of this um, this this rail um, just so it sort of fits nice and snug and flat and then we can then um, we got, what we're going to do is going to drill it out and, and just pop a floating tenon into it so I'm just going to get a paring chisel um, which is one of those uh, and then just sort of skim that nice and flat and do this one and, and also do the other leg okay that should do it um the trick is he's actually not to overdo it um yeah um <laughs> like i says uh, renovation projects are never ever straightforward um what i'd like to do was to i'd like to use a festal domino um as a floating as a floating tenant and and and, and pop it in there now if it wasn't a haunch tenant I could sort of just get the festal machine and, and bore straight down unfortunately I want to keep as much of the original work as I possibly can so what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to bore this this one out by hand and then use the festal machine on the on the on the legs to 
to um, to bore the holes for the floating tenon. Um, so I just got to do a little bit more handwork on this to to make it all work. Okay, that's that's great. So that will just give us some some leg room there to get the domino in, and we need to do that to the other leg. So just need to cut, make a couple of measurements first. First of all, this is the depth of the floating tenon, and also just to record the centre line, which we'll do with a, a very traditional marking gauge. Good. And we'll just um, pencil the line in so we can see it. That's great. Okay, so um, got the depth, got the centre marked out. All we've got to do now is um, a little bit of drilling and chiselling, hopefully. So let's let's give it a go. just a tad tight. Um, I'm going to take a little bit more out because I don't want to split anything so I'm just going to shave a little bit more off there. But I think we are, yeah, perfect, perfect. Okay, so I've um, I've cleaned out um, tenon number two. So just time for a dry fit. So otherwise we'll be we'll look a bit embarrassed if when we've glued it all up, it doesn't um, it doesn't go together. So so. Uh, Yep, I think that's pretty damn good. Right, we can, uh, I think we'll have a look at the glue and see how we go going with that. Okay, so we've um, got our large genre set up. Glue's been cooking for about half hour, so let's have a quick look. So if you can see now, that's um, that's about the consistency of single cream, um, and that's actually perfect now. So we'll um, let's get set up to do a glue up. Okay, so um, got the clamps ready, got the job ready. The trick with glue up really is just that, is to actually get everything ready set up before you start splashing glue everywhere. So, um, so we're all sorted. We've got our bits. So we'll, uh, let's just make a start.
And I think the trick is with glue ups is you've not actually got to sort of really welly these clamps up. You just want to nip the joint up until until they just you just get a little bit of glue squeeze out. And that has actually gone together quite well actually. I'm sort of quite chuffed with that. And just check it for squareness. Yeah, that's not bad. And also just measure the diagonals. So we've got 83.5, 83.4. So we're a little bit long there. I'm just going to move my cramp out a bit just to bring that in. That's perfect. Okay, so as this is a renovation project, um, what I'd really like to do is a minimum possible. Um, if you recall, when we looked at this top, this joint, the joint was pretty sound and pretty straight and went back together. So I want to not really do a lot to it, so then just clean a little bit of the old glue off it and then see if we can, see if we can glue the thing back together. So what I'm gonna do is just get a fairly sort of standard card scraper and just very gently just remove some of the old uh, original hide glue. Um, one of the beauties of hide glue is you don't have to clean all of the old glue off. As soon as you put new fresh hot hide glue on it, um, it reconstitutes the old glue as well. So I'm just being quite careful that I don't um, I don't sort of start taking any wood with it. I just want to get rid of a little bit of the powder. And that looks pretty good. So, let's just have a look. Okay, so I've got the light behind it, as you can see. Um, when I do... Okay, so when I, when I look through, um, there's probably about a two millimeter gap in the center. So it has actually, uh, what's happened with this, it's distorted, it's, it's got wet, and, the, and it's popped the joint open as it's distorted. So we are gonna have to do a little, uh, little bit of planing work on this joint. Okay, so let's do it. Okay, so I think just a couple of quick strokes for the jack line and this will, I think this will be fine. That, that's pretty spot on actually I'm um, I'm showing off a bit now but that's 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 pretty spot on so we'll um, get this on the bench get it glued up get it cramped and uh, and then leave it overnight to dry mm. um, okay so we set up again we've got four um, parallel draw clamps we've got uh, four sets of coals and we've got um, four four ratchet clamps as well so we can clamp lot together Got the glue, so we're ready to go. Now, with hide glue, you, um, or I at least, um, always like to put it on both surfaces. So.
Hello, jaw. So first of all, I'm just nipping the clamps up just to get the thing to hold. As you can see, there's been a little bit of distortion um, due to the damp, but I'll, I'll deal with that in a second. Let's get the clamps nipped up first. So what these ratchet cramps are doing, they're just making sure that it aligns up the best we can. Um, I might actually put a couple of G clamps on as well, just to um, bring it into a little bit tighter lock. Although, oh, actually, that's 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 gone together pretty well. Yeah, that's 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 not bad. Hello, Joe. Hang on the workshop. Oh, you like that glue, don't you? Yes, I thought you would, somehow. Okay, so that's actually gone together really well. I'm actually sort of dead chuffed with that. So um, this needs to stop overnight and we'll have a play around with it in the morning and we'll see what we can do about the surface. Thanks very much.